The Committee on Parole is called to order. Today is March 7, 2022. The time is 8.39 a.m. Members of the panel are Carl Wise, Tony Marabella, and Sherilyn Opsa, who will be chairing. Support staff located at DOC headquarters and banners are Teresa Bullhowick, Maggie Clark, Mia Roden, John Bosher, Francis Abbott. Our remote location is at Mid City Community Nursing and Rehab. With the staff there, please introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Yamina Thompson, Social Service Director here at Mid City Community Nursing and Rehab for Mr. Goldman. Thank you. Um, Hannah Minnick, Probation and Parole. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? My name is Clarence Govan, 1251-01. Thank you, Mr. Govan. Let me explain the process to you. <clears throat> First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participant who have indicated to speak to have their input. We have Mr. Reginald Bell, who's a friend who will be speaking in support. At the end, Mr. Govan, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Yes. Okay, this is the case for Clarence Govan, Jr., DOC number 125401, date of birth, July 1st, 1962 classified as a second felony offender, offense second degree murder. Sentencing date, February 23rd, 1989. Parole date, not eligible. Good time, none, full term, life. Is this information correct, sir? Mr. Govan, good morning. Good morning. Was the information she read out to you, was that right information? It was correct? Yes, ma'am. That was correct. Okay. okay. Well, good morning, Mr. Govan. My name is Cheryl Renatza. Your case has been assigned to me, so I'm going to just ask you a couple of questions. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling okay. Good. Good to hear. So, uh, Mr. Govan, you've, you've, uh, you're currently housed at the uh, rehab facility? Yes. And you've been yes, there since, you've been there a little over a year now? Yeah, a little over a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as your incarceration, you've been incarcerated for about 34 years. Is yes, that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And your last prison facility that you were housed at was at DCI. So you right. came from DCI to the uh, nurse, mm -hmm. the rehab facility. Right. Is that right? Yes, and the and you were um, transferred to the mid city uh, on a compassionate release, and right now you're being considered for a medical treatment furlough. You understand? You understand okay. what that means? Yes. No, not That's really. Not, well, we we received some medical information from from the uh, Dr. Lavisphere, I believe. Um, we're just changing the status of your release. From medical, uh, from compassionate release to a medical treatment furlough. It's my understanding, and let me confirm that with Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson, the uh, the plan is for him to continue his residence at Mid City. Yes, I do know that um, he plan on staying here. Or did yes. your family? Ever my, my mother won't. My mother won't me to go to another facility, but I just want to be somewhere so I can make a progress. So you say your, mo your mother, um, go ahead, Ms. Thompson. At this time, he's currently going to remain here. Right now, we don't okay. have a facility in place. They have not provided me with um, any names of a facility. So currently, he'll be here. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anything else you can add, uh, Ms. Thompson? Is there anything you want us to know about Mr. Govan? 
been a um, ideal uh, resident, had no issues with him. He attends dialysis three times a week. Uh, the only other issue was we had been monitoring his uh, intake as far as his weight because it did drop a little bit. But the doctors and nurses have been monitoring that very closely. That was in our last care plan staff meeting that we discussed. Um, no other issues with him. He has strong family support. The mothers, his um, family do support him. They call, they check on him often. They're very involved in his care. So we have no issues with Mr. Govan here at all. All right. Well, thank you so much for your input. Ms. Hannah from uh, p and is there anything you want to add um, about Mr. Govan? Um, no, ma'am. I've only had to visit him uh, once or twice since I've taken his case over and you know, he's been fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think we had a speaker here, Mr. Bell, who wants to speak on Mr. Govan's behalf. Mr. Bell, we'd like to hear from you now. Yes, ma'am. Um, I visited him um, several times at the um, facility and um, uh, I haven't uh, seen much um, increase as far as um, increasement as far as um, him getting any better or anything like that, whatever. So, was it, but at the same time, his spirits has been up. They, um, they do get his spirits up there and um, he's driving to try to get himself better and anything else they can do uh, can be done. And that aspect as far as um, getting his strength back, it would be a plus. Good deal. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Mr. Govan, what is your age? 59. 59. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to say to us? Yes. <clears throat> Go ahead. I would like to, first, I would like to apologize to the board and to society for what, what I, I committed these 34 years ago. And after seeing these 34, doing these 34 years, I'm still remorseful for my action. <clears throat> and if the board seemed fit to uh, really this now, this medical care, I sure would be appreciative because I definitely need it. All right, sir, thank you. Now, now you understand this is not a parole, right? Okay. This is a medical treatment furlough. Uh -huh. And uh, your, your case was assigned to me, so I'm going to go ahead and vote. Uh, my vote would be to grant the medical treatment furlough and that your residents be um, remain at Mid-City uh, Nursing and Rehab Facility until such time as other arrangements might be made by your family. That's my vote. Uh, I don't see any other questions by my colleagues. Ms. Wise, would you like to vote now? Good morning, sir. I, I concur with Ms. Manasa. My vote is to grant the medical treatment furlough that you remain there on, until uh, you've got uh, authority to move somewhere else. You're going to have to get DOC permission to move somewhere else. And I encourage you to continue to cooperate. Thank you. Mr. Marabella. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. My vote would be the same after viewing the video and listening to the hearing today. My vote would be to grant the medical treatment furlough. Right, thank you. So, Mr. Govan, your status will be changed from compassionate to rele compassionate release to medical treatment furlough. Um, so, good luck to you, sir. I hope that you're able to get an approval to find a facility closer to your family. Good luck, sir. Thank you.
Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Robert McBride and 401-379. Thank you, Mr. McBride. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the case for Robert McBride, DOC number 401-379, date of birth, January 11, 1965, classified as a first felony offender, offense, manslaughter, sentencing date, September 4th, 1998, sentenced to a total of 30 years, parole date, May 11, 2024, good time, December 13, 2023, Full term, November 11, 2028. Is this information correct, sir? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Marabella. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. McBride, my name is Tony Marabella. Your case was assigned to me, uh, so I'll be asking you a few questions today. Um, right. How old are you, Mr. McBride? Uh, I'm doing okay, uh, considering the circumstances. Um, can, can you hear me okay? Uh, not very well. This uh, uh, does they have a volume control? Yeah, uh, it's up. It's all the way up. But okay. I think he asked how old you are, so just speak up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, That's okay. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 57. Okay. Uh, Mr. McBride, uh, you may be a little nervous this morning. That's okay. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. Mr. McBride, it's my understanding that uh, you have been in prison for 23 years on this 30-year sentence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And while you were in prison, you took a lot of courses. You took a lot of things. You were you were classified as a low risk. Is that correct? Is that as far as you remember and understand? Yes. Uh, 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 Lorna, 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 I can't say it. Lorna, it was uh, like negative one. Okay. On, now on you have a, been you have been currently at the Mid City facility for almost two years. Is that right? A little yes. over a year and a half. Uh, yes. And uh, I have reviewed the uh, video and uh, Dr. Uh, Levisphere uh, has indicated and, and, and I've seen that you are legally blind. Is that correct? You can't yes. see anything at all? No, I can't see anything. <laughs> but, but you can perform most of your other uh, needs for example you can feed yourself you can walk uh, you can do all of those other things is that correct yes i can, carry the, uh, I can walk around uh, i can eat my food and uh, wash my face comb my hair uh, you know use the bathroom by myself uh, take a shower now if you are granted a medical parole, will you be? Will you continue to stay at the facility at Mid City Community for a while? Because I lost my house in two thousand five to Hurricane Katrina, and I don't know if I have uh, another place to go. So at least for the time being, your current plan would be to reside at Mid City. Yes. Could we get some uh, input from uh, the staff there? Mm -hmm. Good morning. I am his um, social service director here at Mid City. Uh, he does get around very well to say he is blind. He does well. He's, um, you know, know the building. I set him up with Lighthouse, which is a company that helps teach him how to walk with the cane as well. And it also provides other services for people that are blind. So he's been with them for a while. Um, no behavior issues here with Mr. McBride at all. He has a sister who's very involved, Ms. Uh, Carmen. She calls checks and the things that he needs. She makes sure that he gets those things. 
He cooperates with the staff. He cooperates with his med mid time, meal time. He likes to sit in the back. Dining room is where he eats with uh, uh, Miss Alexandria. It's a, a friend of his. So he's a, a definitely not an issue with us here and haven't been one since I've been here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Madam Chairman, I think that's all the questions that I have. All right, thank you. And I don't see any other, uh, any other questions. Mr. Uh, is there a statement, Mr. McBride, you'd like to make to us before we vote? Yeah, there's a statement. Well, uh, thank you for this opportunity to have, have uh, a parole hearing. Uh, it's a yes, sir. I think we're ready to vote. Okay, so we're going to be voting, and Mr. Mirabella is going to be voting first. Okay. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. McBride, uh, I have reviewed uh, the, uh, the video. Uh, I've looked at your history. Uh, your performance in prison before you ended up on uh, compassionate relief was very good. Uh, you had a low risk, uh, very few write-ups. I don't show any write-ups on, on my records. Uh, you have served 23 years of a 30-year uh, manslaughter sentence. Uh, it is clear to me that listening to all of the medical professions, uh, that their assessment is that uh, you're disabled, uh, that uh, you do not pose any risk to yourself or to others if you are released on a medical parole. Uh, my vote today would be to grant your medical parole. Currently, you will be residing at uh, Mid-City uh, until I assume you find a, a place perhaps with your sister, but uh, uh, that would be my vote, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mirabella. Ms. Wise? Yeah, uh, yes, my vote is to grant as well, consistent with the medical department's recommendation, the secretary's recommendation, uh, that the medical parole will be granted. Uh, and I do concur with my colleagues. Uh, based on the information provided, my vote is also to grant the medical parole. Good luck to you, uh, Mr. McBride. You've been granted a medical parole. I think that concludes our business at Mid-City, so we will adjourn. It's 9.01. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Good morning. Y'all have a great day. Thanks. You too. Thank you.
The Committee on Parole is called to order. Today is March 7, 2022. The time is 9.05 a.m. Members of the panel are Pearl Wise, Tony Marabella, and Cheryl Nasa, who will be chairing today. Our remote location is at Angola with the staff at Angola. Please introduce themselves. Lauren Hooper, Reginald Admiral Classification. Carmen Shipley, Inmate Records. Cindy Park, Nurse Practitioner. Tanya Faust, Hostess. Thank you. We are ready for our first case. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Say your name and DOC number. Leonard McGee, 1194-02. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record. Then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Do you understand the parole board process? Say it. Yes, yes I do. Okay, this is the case for Leonard McGee, DOC number 119402, date of birth, April 1st, 1963, classified yep. as a fifth felony offender. Offenses, armed robbery, attempted armed robbery, purse snatching, forceful rape, Forceful rape, simple burglary, attempted simple burglary. Sentencing dates are July 15, 2004, October 24, 1988, January 12, 1987, October 27, 1987, and October 27, 1988. Sentenced to a total of 112 years and five days. Parole date, November 17, 2023. Good time, November 12, 2114. And full term, November 13, 2115. Is this information correct, sir? Yes, or no? Yes, just say yes or no. Yes, yes or no? This is what we want to say. Is this, yes, do you understand? You need to respond. No. What's wrong with it? I'm not on no rate. Okay. Okay. Well, all right then. We'll just we'll just move on. How you doing this morning? Well, I'm I'm a little all right. You a little all right? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you know what's going on today? I'm having a parole hearing. Okay, for what? For armed robbery. Okay, I'm, uh, but uh, the parole hearing is a medical parole uh, based on the uh, medical information and the video that, uh, that was submitted that you participated in. Uh, this panel is trying to consider whether or not we should grant you a medical parole to go to an, another uh, care facility. Uh, is that something you would like to do? Yes. You would? Uh, the, the only thing that concerns me is that you had a fight in 2020. What was it all about? Um, oh, the guy dashed coffee on me. Okay, okay. Oh, it, it wasn't an accident? Well, if he wouldn't have dashed the coffee on me, I would have never had to fight. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So I don't know what I was asking was, do you think perhaps it was an accident in that he, when he dashed the coffee on you, or was it deliberate? What do you remember? Oh, oh he, he did it deliberate. Oh, okay. Okay. That's a different circumstances. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you, you, uh, you believe that if you get to go somewhere else, you're going to cooperate with the rules and, and do what they ask you to do? Yes, I will. You sure? Yeah. If, if somebody wastes coffee on you, you're going to tell somebody instead of hitting them? Yeah. That would be the best way to go. Yes. Okay. Right. All right, right ma'am. Could you put some uh, medical information on the record for us? So we, uh, you've submitted you know, everything. Just put it on the record. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, I've known Leonard for many years. He's lived in the skilled nursing unit for at least three. So I'm not sure about the coffee situation. I'm sure he was with me when that happened, but mm. um, he has an extensive history. He's had multiple strokes. Uh, he's blind. He uh, has a history of diabetes that's well-controlled, seizures that are well-controlled, high blood pressure. He is totally paralyzed in his left side. His left leg is curled up um, and -hmm. deformed and contractured. His left arm is contractured also. He requires, he is able to feed himself, but everything else the uh, orderlies and the nurses have to do, he is incontinent of urine and stool. Uh, He requires to be bathed, dressed, uh, showered by the staff here. Leonard is never, we've never had any problems with him at all with regards to uh, the way he treats the nurses or the orderlies. He's, it's quite pleasant to deal with. Thank you. That's all I have, Chairman. Uh, uh, anything else, Ms. Wise? Yeah, I was going to ask Leonard, is there anything else you want to tell us? Leonard, anything? You anything else tell? you want to tell us? It's okay if you have anything to say. You just, you just look like you wanted to say something. That's why I was, uh, you, you didn't? Okay, that, that's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to. For some reason, you look like you was trying to say something. That's why I was trying to hear what you had to say. Uh, uh, Warden, is there anything you want to share with us about this case? Yeah, he has a poor disciplinary record. He has 99 disciplinary reports. Like you said, he has a, it's a rule 11 an aggravated fight. It was his last one in uh, 2020. Mm-hmm. And he is a sex offender. He is, we will have to register. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is. And he served, uh, I think, about 28 years of his sentence. All right. Thank you, Ward. You've got armed robbery was in 04. What? Um... If he was favorable, voted favorably today, what would be the uh, residence situation? We have arranged for him to, to to be housed to be live at the villa, and mm-hmm. they've already they've already accepted him and will take him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. So, uh, Ms. Wise, will you offer your vote? Yes, indeed. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I thought it was it was pinned into Villa uh, in the records. Uh, Mr. Mr. McGee, I uh, I'm inclined to take a chance on you. Uh, you understand that if you get there and it, and it don't work out, you will be back at LSP. I want to be clear about that. If you don't cooperate, you will be back. So okay. my, my if you get if you're granted today, my vote is to grant the medical parole based on uh, the documentation for the medical department, the secretary's recommendation. Uh, that you be granted medical parole. And, and with, within, uh, again, if there's any kind of mishap, you'll be returned to LSP and to serve out the remainder of your sentence. Best wishes to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. McGee, I, I've got some questions. I, I mean, I really do. I've got some concerns uh, because of okay. your past behavior and the things that you've done in the past. Uh, um, but in listening to the doctors and listening to the medical staff, uh, it appears that uh, you are disabled, uh, and, and that goes a long way in, 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 in my decision. Uh, I'm willing to take a chance on you as well. My, my vote today would be to grant, uh, under the same terms as uh, Ms. Wise has uh, indicated. So good luck to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. McGee, um, I I do have some serious concerns. I I understand you have serious medical issues. I can't, it's hard for me to get past your poor conduct record and your poor institutional record. Uh, And as the warden pointed out, um, you know, based on the the, uh, extreme length of your sentence, the nature of the crime, the uh, opposition that's been expressed. My vote today is to deny your uh, the application for medical parole. 
Uh, and so I will defer to staff for the, for the result. I'm not sure if it requires a unanimous vote at this point. Francis? Stand by, Mr. McGee. We're checking, Mr. Monta. Do you understand what just happened? Yeah. Two people said yes, and one person said no. So they're trying to see if it has to be all three say yes. So they don't know. So there's a good chance you may not be leaving. Okay, but we're going to wait and see. All right. Thank you, Ms. Parks, for helping explain that. Renata, it would just be treated as a regular parole. Uh, so it would be, he would be eligible for a, a split vote. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Ming, Mr. <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. McGee, uh, it only requires two votes. So your medical parole has been granted. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Good luck. Is, is there, is there a sex offense? Yes. Yes. Probably a couple of them. Forcible rape. Right. Uh, two two cases. Sense, I believe it has to be unanimous. Yes. He is not eligible for two thirds. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. It, he would not qualify due to the sex offense. All right. Thank you. Based on the nature of your offense, uh, Mr. McGee. <clears throat> It does require unanimous vote, so the request for medical parole has been denied. Sorry for the confusion.
Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Augie Truve, 99125. Thank you, Mr. Truve. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? So far. Okay, this is the case for Augie Truve, DOC number 99125, date of birth, June 17, 1950, classified as a second felony offender, offense, second degree murder, sentencing date, February 26, 1981, sentenced to life in DOC, parole date, not eligible, good time, none, full term, life, is this information correct, sir? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Renato. Sorry. Good morning, Mr. Truve. How you doing? I'm good. How are you today? I'm getting there. Good. I, I want to just to clarify something that uh, we said earlier. She, she said you're classified as a second felony offender. I'm showing you uh, on my paperwork as a first felony offender. Is that right? Second. On your master prison record. It would be that second. you got a copy of. Okay. You may, okay. Um, so how old are you, sir? 72. 72. How long have you been in jail? Since 1991, I believe. Well... So how long is that? Let's see, 29 years, almost 30 years? Yes, a uh, better. Uh, 39 years, almost 40 years. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> Mr. Truve, if you were successful today, <clears throat> do you know what the residence plan would be for you? based on your medical issues? Well, yes, I, I would be living with my sister. Oh dear. We've arranged for you to live at another place called River Oaks. River Oaks. Oh, yeah. River Oaks. River Oaks. Ms. Parks, would you go ahead and just tell us, we we have the, uh, the video yeah. and all in the record, but for the record, just enter some information for us. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Truvia had a stroke about almost two years ago. He also has a, um, a meningioma in his brain that is large and, and growing, which he has refused treatment for. As a result of the stroke and possibly the meningioma causing damage to his brain, he has left-sided paralysis. He cannot move his arm or his leg. Uh, he is essentially bedridden, though with assistance, he can get up to a wheelchair. Uh, he is able to feed himself, but he requires to be uh, bathed, dressed, um, turned in position. Uh, he is incontinent of urine and stool, and he does wear a diaper. And so would you tell us about River Oaks as well? Uh, River Oaks is a assisted live at a nursing home type facility where they are they they would be able to take care of patients like him. And, and it is in Baker. Baker. In Baker, Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, so I see that um, <clears throat> his last write-up was uh, some 21 years ago in 2001. Um, so since then, the conduct record's been good. Warden Hooper, is there any anything you'd like to add about Mr. Truvier? He is a second-time offender. There's an amendment on 3-4-2022. So he has a second class and he does have a good contact record. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I appreciate that clarification. Um, I don't see <clears throat> any other questions by my colleagues. Mr. Truvier, is there anything you'd like to say to us? Do you understand about the River Oaks facility in Baker? Not really. Well, not really. They found, first they, they, they found a suitable uh, residence uh, that can take care of you. 
you know, I'd be concerned about your sister's ability to be able to take care of you like you need to be cared for. Well, she has over 25 years of hospital uh, uh, employment. Well, I'm going to defer to the staff there at Angola to make that, that judgment call. I think they've probably found a facility that works well for you. Are you willing to go there? Yes. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, I think we're prepared to vote. I don't see any questions by my colleagues, so I will vote first, Mr. Trouvier. Um, based on the information that's been provided in the record and then that's been provided today, your, your uh, age, your length of incarceration, and your medical concerns, my vote today would be to grant the medical treatment furlough. <clears throat> Ms. Wise? And good morning, sir. I concur with my colleague. Uh, based on the information we re we received uh, to grant your medical treatment uh, furlough, and as it was recommended by the medical director and Secretary de Blanc that that, uh, that you can that you are eligible. Best wishes to you, sir. Uh, you. Listen, listen to the professionals now and trust their judgment on what's best for you. All right, Mr. Marabella. My vote would be the same for the same reasons as both you and uh, Ms. Wise. All right, Mr. Trouvier, you've been granted a medical treatment furlough. So you'll be transferred to the uh, River Oaks and Baker. Good luck to you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Warden Hooper, I think that concludes our business at your facility. So we will adjourn. The time is 929. Thank you. Oh, do you need me to put your mask?
The Committee on Parole is called back to order. The time is 9.41 a.m. Members of the panel are Carl Wise, Tony Marabella, and Cheryl Renato will be chairing today. Our remote location is at Elaine Hunt. With the staff there, please introduce themselves. Chris Hill, Long Classification. Kurt Uran, Warden. Joe Buttress, Assistant Warden. Kevin Durham, Colonel. And we'll have our medical director, he, he's walking in here now. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Roundtree. How are y'all? Thank you. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Reverend Fox, DOC number 462548. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record. Then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is the case for Irvin Fox, DOC number 462548, date of birth, June 24th, 1981, classified as a fifth felony offender. Office, habitual offender law, looting. Sentencing date, August 29th. 2013, sentenced to a total of 10 years. Pro date, not eligible. Good time, not eligible. Full term, August 27, 2022. Is this information correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Marabello. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fox. My name is Tony Marabello. Your case was assigned to me, so I'll be the one. Uh, talking with you at first, okay? Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Mr. Fox, uh, you're 40 years old, is that right? Yes, sir. You're a fifth time felony offender? Yes, sir. You've had a pretty extensive life as a criminal, haven't you? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about that. Why is that? Uh, I was just kept getting in trouble and stuff, so mm -hmm. I changed now. You've taken a lot of. I see that you've taken a lot of programs. You've taken risk management, reentry, uh, victim awareness, uh, anger management. Is that correct? Yes, sir. How long have you been in prison on this ten-year charge? Nine years and seven months. Nine years and seven months. You actually have a full-time release date in August. Is that right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Fox, uh, you have requested uh, a medical for, uh, a medical parole. Uh, I have reviewed uh, all of your file. I, I watched the video with Dr. Roundtree. Yes, sir. Uh, I have read Dr. Roundtree's report. Uh, I've read Dr. Levisphere's uh, report. Uh, if you are granted medical parole, will you be living at a nursing home facility or do you know where you'll be living? At my mom, at my mother's house. At your mother's house? And where, yes, is, where yeah. is that? In New Orleans. Who all lives there? My mom and my daddy. Anyone else live there? No, sir. Is your mother and father capable of taking care of you? Yes, sir. Are you able to get around? Yes, sir. I you get can around. walk okay? Yeah, I walk a little good, yes. Okay. Dr. Roundtree, could uh, you elaborate a little more for the record? I did watch your uh, video, but yes. if you could tell us uh, more for the record about uh, Mr. Uh, Fox, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Fox came to us as a direct transfer. Um, he had been found to have um, problems with his sinuses, headaches, visual problems, visual disturbances, uh, months ago, uh, was taken finally to UMC uh, 
hospital uh, and was found to have a cancerous mass in his right sinus right here. It appears that it was uh, originally a primary cancer from the salivary glands, so it's very rare. Also very, very difficult to treat. It does not respond well to treatment. As long as you're under treatment, you can keep it at bay. The minute you stop the treatment, it, it just comes back. Um, he had an extensive amount of cancer radiating into his head and neck, going back into his brain, uh, actually penetrating the optic nerve and causing blindness in his right eye. So a uh, concerted effort was made to get him into chemo and radiation very quickly, which he's been undergoing him and tolerating very well, and it's improved his condition somewhat. Um, he's able to see a little bit more, but not very well. Uh, he's able to get around and ambulate, whereas before debilitating headaches, nausea, vomiting, and so forth, he was pretty much uh, difficult uh, as far as getting up and taking care of himself. Now, uh, with everyone working at uh, Mary Bird and Charity Hospital, he's doing, he's doing well. I did talk to his oncologist, and the oncologist uh, told me that he has a life expectancy of, of six months to about nine months once this therapy is about to stop. Uh, they do not give it uh, much more than that. If it is, it would be more miraculous. Uh, they have done pretty much everything they can. And I've talked to both the oncologist that does the chemo and the radiation oncologist, and they both agree with pretty much the time frame. Uh, we considered uh, getting him home to his parents who can take care of him. He will need to continue some of his palliative chemo but he is in palliative care now, and uh, he will need uh, the attention of the oncologist to help with his narcotics and so forth. Without the narcotics and the, the nausea medication, he would not be functional, not be able to uh, move and talk with you. He would be vomiting constantly and, and being uh, dizzy and so forth. So uh, he will require some extensive help, but his parents have been very good about sticking with the social work and helping us. So I think he would be a good candidate to go home to them. Um, but again, like I say, his life expectancy is short, is short. Thank you very much. Warden Darian, is there anything you can tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Fox? No, sir, not really familiar with this individual since he transferred into Hunt and basically been under medical care since he's been here. Hasn't been any problems or issues for us. Thank you. Madam Chairman, I think that's all the questions that I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Bella. <clears throat> Mr. Fox, is there something you'd like to say to us before we vote? Uh, I hope I, I make it. I'm doing good with myself. Staying out of trouble, ma'am. All right, good. Good to hear. Thank you, sir. Yes, I think we're ready to vote. We'll start with Mr. Marabella. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fox, uh, in looking at your record, I mean, you're a young man, you're 40 years old, you've had a horrible criminal history. You were on supervision eight times, you were revoked four times. Uh, you're, uh, everything that I, I see here, although you, you did make a turnaround, uh, you did a lot of very positive things uh, since you've been in prison. Uh, you have a 10 year sentence, you've served over nine years of that 10 year sentence. Uh, you, uh, you have worked, uh, you've worked hard based upon the medical uh, information uh, that uh, I have received in watching Dr. Uh, Roundtree's video, uh, reading uh, Dr. Levisphere's uh, letter. Uh, my recommendation today is going to be to grant your medical parole to your parents' house. Yeah. So I hope that uh, uh, I hope that you're able to, uh, uh, if that occurs, that uh, you're able to live out the rest of your life uh, with your family. Good luck. Thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Wise. Uh, Mr. Fox, I concur. My vote is the same for the same reasons been stated on the record. Big pushes to you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, I do agree, I do concur rather with, with my colleagues, Mr. Fox, my vote also is to grant the medical uh, pearl to your parents' home. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. And that, uh, Warden Gayron, that concludes our business at your facility. We'll adjourn. It's 9.51. Thanks, Dr. Roundtree. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.
The committee on parole is called back to order. The time is 9.55 a.m. Members of the panel are Carl Wise, Tony Marabello, and Cheryl Renazzo, who will be chairing today. Our remote location is at LCIW. With the staff there, please introduce themselves. Warden Thomas. Chair of PARDC Manager. Amelia Gordon. Shalika Brown, Lieutenant. Thank you. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? My name is Gwendolyn Buford, and my DOC number is 430-832. Thank you, Ms. Buford. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participant who have indicated to speak to have their input, we have Ms. Ashley Dowden from Louisiana Pro Project who will be speaking in support. At the end, Ms. Buford, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is a case for Gwendolyn Buford, DOC number 430832, date of birth, October 15, 1956, classified as a first felony offender. Offense? Yes, ma'am. Aggravated rape. Sentencing dates are July 11, 2000, November 10, 2010. Sentence originally life in prison, amended to 30 years. Parole date, August 1, 2021. Good time, March 21, 2024. Full term, September 17, 2029. Is this information correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Pearl. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. How many of these hearings have you had? How many what? How many parole hearings have you participated in? I never had any. This is my oh, first is one. Okay, okay. I just wanted to be sure. Um, uh, why are you in jail? I'm, um, my charge is aggravated rape. Yeah, I know what your charges are, but why, why would you say you in jail? Okay, um, I was forced to um, have sexual intercourse with my son. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that's what that's what uh, that's what he said. Uh, he the, the victim is is unopposed to your release, and that's what he said that you uh, you were just kind of doing what you were told as well. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good. Uh, you've had some uh, great programs, 510 hours of programs. Just just name the three programs you've taken that really, really um, made, had an impact on you. Uh, the Moral Integrity Group. I took NCCR to, like, to go into a poetry class because I really want to take that class. Um, anger management. And um, I took domestic violence also. Good, those good. classes really helped me. Good, good. So what do you know now you didn't know before? I know that to be a stronger person and that um, I know that I have to be able not to let people manipulate me to do things that I don't want to do. And like if like if, if something else was to come up like that, I know I to be stronger and to take control and to do the right thing and call the cops or whatever I have to do to stop, you know, the situation at hand. Mm hmm. Good, good. That's what I. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, uh, so, what is your marital status now? Are you married? I'm divorced. I'm divorced. You're divorced. And how many children are you the mother of? Four. Uh, what are their ages? I have a thirty. Um, I want to say a forty-one, a forty, and the victim. I think he's like. 35 or 30. I forget their ages. <laughs> I understand, but they, yeah, but they all grown. What, what are your yeah. relationship with them now? How's it going? They, um, I have contact with all of them except the victim. And I'm, I'm close with all my children. Okay. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, you do have a low tiger score and uh, I see that you did complete the uh, sex offender treatment program. You yes, ma'am. All that. And you know, that's going to change your life going forward. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, the registration and all that. Uh, you're a high school graduate, is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. And so tell me about the trade. Uh, were you able to finish the trade or what? 
No, I'm wait. I'm waiting to get into NCCR. That's like for um. Up, I took the class, and I want to get into upholstery. If I don't get in the class here and I get granted and go home, my goal is to go to school and to get into upholstery class. Oh, good. Okay. I good. really want to get into a class. I want to learn how to like upholstery, like do furniture and sand down furniture and you know re varnish it and everything. Yeah. That's the yeah. goal that I want to do. That's good. Make something new. Yeah. <laughs> make something old and make it new. Now, I do want to inform you now that all law enforcement is opposed to your early release. There's nothing you can do about it, but I just want, want you to be aware of that. But your okay. victim uh, is unopposed. Uh, okay. And, uh, and I wanted you to know that as well. Uh, this, is the, this is a horrible crime. These circumstances are really, really horrible. I tell yes, you. Uh, uh, staff there, is there anything you want to tell us about Ms. Blueford? About the hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, no, nothing, um, you know, to, she hasn't had a, any write-ups since 2016. So mm -hmm. we're proud of her for that. And um, just completing her different classes that, you know, she spoke of and what's helped her the most. But no, we don't have any issues with Miss Buford here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chair, Madam Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Wise. <clears throat> I don't... <clears throat> See any other questions? So we'd like to hear from Ms. Dowden. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Ashley Dowden with Louisiana Parole Project, client advocate. Um, I have spoken on a few occasions with Ms. Buford. I've also spoken with her daughter, uh, who she would plan to live with long term. Uh, we've accepted Ms. Buford in our program, but in a little non-traditional way, she would be going directly to live with her daughter, um, you know, for, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, you know, there would be the registration, the expense of the registration if she moved to Baton Rouge and then to New Iberia. Um, and uh, also uh, the housing that we have for our women is not quite in the correct zone um, for someone, you know, because we want to follow uh, distance guidelines that we have in our parish for people who have to register uh, from schools. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure that her residence was on the up and up with all of that. Um, so she will not be housed at Parole Projects. So she'll go straight uh, home to live with Amanda uh, in New Iberia. She lives in a, Amanda lives in a rural area. There's no children in the home. Um, she has an excellent relationship with her daughter. Uh, but we will be picking up Ms. Buford. We'd bring her straight to Baton Rouge uh, where we could process her through. We could, uh, you know, start to connect her with any social services that she qualifies for. Uh, she would also meet her case manager. She absolutely will have a case manager and we will provide her a phone and walk her through how she can do our program remotely. So she'd be taking all of the same classes that everyone takes when they come through our reentry re program but we would be doing them remotely. And her case manager would stay connected with her. I would also uh, be participating to make sure we have that double layer of attention um, on her since she wouldn't be directly living with us. Uh, we will ensure that she has the same supports, the same chance of success as all of our clients. All right, great, thank you. Thank yes. you. Uh, Ms. Buford, is there something you'd like to say to the parole panel before we vote? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to say that I know that as a mother that I failed my child and I take full responsibility for not being the mother that I was supposed to be. That I know that I was supposed to protect him and I didn't. And if I could see him and be able to tell him I am so sorry that I didn't. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I think the panel's right. prepared to vote. We'll start yeah. with Ms. Wise. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Bluford. Uh, well said. Uh, well said. Uh, Thank uh, you. My, uh, my vote is to grant because of the good work that you've done, uh, the positive comments from the staff, how well you've been doing, and, and the program uh, to the Louisiana Parole Project. Uh, I, need, I want you to comply with everything that they ask you to do. Uh, comply, yes, ma'am. Comply with them. Uh, and then, uh, and then you have a curfew. I, I, don't, I don't need you out late, you know, 10 p.m. Yes, ma'am, I'll be in early. <laughs> uh, 
and go and I want you to go to find you a church and get involved. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's on the top of my list. Go to church. <laughs> uh, and you you have plenty of, uh, but now you know you you know and uh, comply with your sex offender registration mandates. Uh, yes, ma'am. It's gonna as be some differences there with some minor children and stuff. So be careful. I know you won't be around your grandkids and all that. That may not be the case. So comply with those. Uh, and, and also, you're not going to be able to leave until DOC approves your residence plan. That's just standard for sex offenders. So, I mean, yes, it's really ma'am. standard for everybody. So I hope your, your residence plan get approved. Best yes, wish ma'am. for you. That's my vote. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Thank Maribel. You. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Ms. Buford, uh, I concur with Ms. Wise. Uh, I've reviewed your report. I do have an added condition that I would want to put on. I know you're going to the parole project and I'm sure they're going to probably give you a mental health evaluation, but I would like to make sure that that's added on because in your documents, it shows that that's yeah, the high that's need it. that you have. And yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my recommendation would be that you uh, get a mental health evaluation, follow whatever treatment is recommended and follow their medication. If they give you medication, you're to take that medication according to prescribed, okay? Yes, yes sir. Good Thank luck you. to you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Buford, I do concur with my colleagues. My vote is the same for the same reason. So you'll go to the parole project plan and participate remotely. And yes, all ma'am. the other special, do you understand the special conditions? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Warden, that uh, concludes our business at your facility. So we'll adjourn. It is, let me see, 10.07. Thank you so much for accommodating us. Thank you.
The Committee on Parole is called to order. The time is 10, 11 a.m. Members of the panel are Pearl Wise, Tony Marabella, and Sharon also will be chairing. Our remote location is at David Wade. With the staff at David Wade, please introduce themselves. Warden Jerry Goodwin. Crystal Seymour. Lieutenant Colonel Malcolm. That's everyone. Thank you. We are ready for our first case. Will the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number. John J. Hall, 95572. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participants who have indicated to speak to have their input. We have two who are here in opposition and both will be speaking. We have Mr. Darren McGee, victim, and Ms. Marion Lewis, victim. At the end, Mr. Hall, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? You understand the process? Yes, fine. Okay, this is the case for John Hall, DOC number 95572, date of birth. February 21st, 1944, classified as a second felony offender, offense, manslaughter, sentencing date, February 20th, 2002, sentenced to a total of 40 years, parole date, September 18, 2016, good time, not eligible, full term, September 17, 2036. Is this information correct, sir? Yes, I Thank you, Ms. Renato. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, Mr. Hall. Good morning. Mr. Hall, you, this is a rehearing for you, right? You appeared before a parole committee before? Yes, I am. And I think I sat on that panel in 2018. Do you remember yes, that? I, yes, I am. Okay. So I want to just get some information into the record, sir. <clears throat> How old are you? 78. 78? And yeah. how long have you been in jail on this uh, <clears throat> manslaughter conviction? Ever since 1996, ma'am. Is that 25 years? Yes, ma'am. And you were originally charged with second degree murder, is that correct? That's fine. But you played part of a plea, you played to manslaughter? Well, ma'am, I went to trial. It was a mistrial. Then they came back to me with manslaughter charge. I went to trial. It was a mistrial. Did you plead right. to manslaughter? When they came back for the second trial, that's what she's asking. Did you take the plea bargain? For I them? took the plea bargain. Okay. That, thank you uh, for, for your help, Warden Goodwin. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so, so how old were you at the time of the um, crime? Uh, <clears throat> Roughly guess I believe I was about 54, 55, somewhere along in that. And tell us about what, what actually happened. Ma'am. That'd be a long time ago. Well, I know you yeah. remember some of the details, so tell yeah. tell Ms. Renata the details that you remember. That you remember, yeah. No. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's just all of it. It was just a nightmare then at the time of being. I just don't hardly remember anything. It was just, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that's happened. You, the the victim was your girlfriend at the time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> There's some uh, information in the record that I read that y'all were kind of playing. You you and she um, played 
with the record says sneak attacks. Yes, I am. You know, things like that. And uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> she be at home sometime by herself at night and uh, I work at night and uh, I was trying to show her how to protect herself, things like that when somebody sneak up on things like that. So that's what that's, I, yeah. that's yeah. what happened. That's what was going on during when the crime was committed. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You know, I was you know trying to show how to protect herself. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so, Mr. Hall, you're, you are a second offender. Your first offense was simple robbery. You did five years for that? Yes, ma'am. All right. And um, tell us about, you've been in jail 25 years for this. Tell us what you've done, uh, <clears throat> what programs you've taken since you've been in, in jail. Well, I took a few uh, classes since I've been in jail and I, the one I didn't know I had, and uh, re-entry, I took eight hours of re-entry at Wynn Correction Center. Here, I couldn't take no uh, re-entry because I'm not closer to getting out. And so the other 20 hours of re-entry, I couldn't take it. Then uh, stress management, victim awareness, I took down. And uh, another one, I took that one too. Uh, I have some records that uh, when they transferred me from Wynn Correction Center, I didn't get them here. And so I, they still in progress. I'm trying to get them. So, so you mentioned victim awareness. Tell me what you learned out from that program. Well, victim awareness, I learned that uh, sometimes you have to walk away from things. You have to compromise with things, not within you, uh, outside of you. You got to compromise with other people. You got to compromise. Then you got to respect other people as much as you want them to respect you and a victim of awareness and things like that. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. Did you, um, you didn't mention anger management, but I believe you took some anger management class. Yes, ma'am. What'd you okay. learn in that? Well, I learned how to control your uh, anger. And uh, when other people started getting angry at you, you start to uh, be quiet, walk away. That don't mean you be scared or afraid of, but you be, you know, getting out the way of them so you don't know what they were going to do. So you're going to try to defend yourself if they act up on you. So anger management, that's good course to take so I learned from that too. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I want to just come in on your institutional record looks pretty good. You uh you have what I saw one write up, one D B in two thousand eleven. Is that accurate? Two thousand eleven? Yeah. Well I it might have been uh, I thought it was about 2008 or nine or somewhere like that. It might have been 2000. Well, maybe I made a wrong note, but it was a low court write-up. Yeah, it was a long time, but write-up, that write-up, I didn't deserve to get that because uh, she said I was smoking. When I wasn't smoking, I was giving the guy another light. That was 2011, Mr. Knox, March 8th, 2011 at uh, Wynn Correctional Center. All right, great. Thank you. Um, what I what I tell me what your plan would be if you would be successful today. Where would you go? Uh, where would I go? John Burry, Louisiana. I go to John Burry, Louisiana. Start me a garden out and back to work. I'm seventy eight years old. People don't like to hire older people to work, and. Uh, I do my best working around the house and going fishing, you know, going to church, you know, things like that. Then I was thinking about holding a small meeting with some teenagers, boys, try to teach them not to 
get into the wrong gang or uh, coming to jail or stay out of jail, don't pull with drugs or nothing like that. That's what I was thinking about doing. Where would you live? John Bird. Have, with who? Pardon me? Who, who, who would with? you live with? Uh, it's a lady down there, uh, John Burr. I've been knowing her from like the early 80s. Her name is Shirley Austin. Shirley Austin. She's that just was, a friend? She's a friend. She's been with me ever since I've been in jail. Where's she at today? Is she here? She's not with us today. No, ma'am. Did you tell her you were coming up for parole? I told her right about four months ago I was coming up for parole. I haven't talked to her lately. Mm. All right, sir. Um, let me tell you what concerns me. And I voted for you last year, and I was the only uh, favorable vote you got. I don't know if you remember that, but I did vote for you because the warden right. had some good things to say about you. But I, uh, I'm concerned because there's some information in the record that indicates there was um, in your, in your uh, relationship with Miss Yvonne that you were manipulative, you like to control her, and there were some domestic abuse issues. <clears throat> Tell me about that. Oh, the domestic abuse issue. Ma'am, we didn't have no dom domestic abuse issue there in our relationship. Yeah. Okay, all or right. The only thing she wanted to do was to learn how to protect herself. That's all. Okay. You know, she, done, she asked me to show her, you know, little things, how to you know, get away from a predator or thing like that, I try to show her. That's okay. It. All right, sir. I don't have any other questions. Warden Goodwin, is there anything you can add? Uh, no, ma'am, other than uh, things we've already discussed. He's uh, 78 years old. Obviously, he does have some health issues. Uh, he is disabled, and uh, we would help him with uh, any applications for SSI or disability, things like that. Uh, he does have a residence plan submitted to uh, to live in Jonesboro, Louisiana with Miss Shirley Austin. He's taken some program and he got his GED back in 1980 and he took some programs uh, at, while he was at Winfield, Wynn Correctional Center. Uh, his conduct record is, is pretty good. You took, I mean, he's excellent. Actually, you touched on that earlier. He's had one low court write up since 2002, since he began his incarceration. So that's uh, pretty remarkable. He's gone 20 years. He's very cooperative with staff. He's very uh, uh, mindful of rules and regulations of the institution. He's not a problem offender uh, whatsoever. He's, uh, he's been here over six years and, and uh, you know, he, he's really, uh, not an issue at all. I know the, the crime he committed, the crime he pled guilty to is very serious, uh, very significant in nature. And uh, but, but as far as his institutional history, his institutional record, he's been a model prisoner uh, throughout his incarceration. And, and uh, he's very, very cooperative with staff and has a good attitude and very good demeanor. Thank you. Thank you, Warden Goodwin. Yes, Appreciate it. Ms. Teresa, could you introduce our guests that want to speak? First, we will hear from Mr. Darren McGee, who's a victim. Go ahead, Mr. McGee. Hey, everyone. How are y'all doing? Good. What John has done, uh, I don't think it's forgivable. After he was found guilty, he made the consequences of it. And uh, to hear him say it was just one of those things that happened. Well, when we do stuff wrong, there's consequences. And it is just one of those things that happened. Uh, teaching my mom how to defend herself with all the brothers she's had growing up, she didn't need that. Sean, even trying to give him the benefit of a doubt that, you know, maybe you would sit up and tell the truth, there's nothing truthful that's coming out your mouth. 
and, and it just hurts because you took everything away from me, my sister. She has grandkids that she don't know about. She has four grandkids that graduated from college, one with a master. She has her youngest at LSU right now. She has a son that did 22 years at a restaurant and broke out from that and started his own business. And I'm not too long. It's just the fact that my mom didn't see any of that because you decided that, hey, I'm going to take her life. For what reason? Uh, a, a, a sneak attack drill. And it, and it, I don't, I don't know what else to say. No, I, John should stay locked up. Whether he's been a model prisoner or not, that just means that our tax dollars got a good, he's, he's going to do what he needs to do and, and he won't be a bother to somebody. But John, no, no, I'm, I'm done. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Next, we will hear from Ms. Marion Lewis, who's a victim. Hello, how y'all doing? Good. Can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Um, it's hard. And the things he was saying is, is, is not true. But it's mama, he trying to teach mama how to defend herself. Mama knew how to defend herself. She did, you know, and the sneak attack, this that's not true. He 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 it was one incident that this man he had dry water in the tub and it sat there for a week because I used to live with them. And he just used to be so sneaky and it just no, he don't deserve to get out. And I asked mama, like she used to do CNA and like she'll be hurting. So I rub her down because she used to love to sew. And I rub her down. And I'm like, Mama, what's wrong? She be like, Well, I picked up a patient wrong. Was that he didn't ever like hit her in the face because I was there, like I leave on weekends or however, but like and then she'll be like, well, I don't know why he had the water in the tub, but then it came about he had put a towel around her neck. She was she, He was in the house. He twisted the towel. Her thumbs was up under the towel, and he kept dipping her head in the water. She didn't tell nobody but me. So he tried this before, and he didn't succeed, and she was just so scared that she didn't tell nobody. And I asked stuff like, Mama, we can tell her. She was like, no, nah, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me if I say something. <laughs> And he did, but I thought my mama told my brother because I asked her, she promised that she was going to tell him, but she didn't. And I, I mean, but no, he don't deserve to get out. He don't deserve, he took her life. He said that he he didn't deserve to get wrote up. My mama didn't deserve to get her life took. He was jealous. My mama used to go to church. He used to, she couldn't wear pants. He didn't want her to wear pants at all. She had to wear dresses all the time. It was bad. <laughs> he not, he not, no, he don't deserve to get out. No, he needs to stay exactly where he is. He shouldn't have got out the first time. And my mama probably would have still been here. He's not a nice man. He was mean to me when I was a child. He's not a nice man. And that's all I have to say. And thank you all. Thank you, Miss Lewis. Thank you. Mr. Hall, is there a statement you'd like to make to the panel before we vote? The closing statement. Speak only to the probable and I don't know. I'm sorry about what had happened. And I hope it will never happen again. In the meantime, I learned my lesson since I've been locked up. And, uh, and I thank God to let me live this long to see what uh, people will do to you to keep you behind bars. They'll say anything they will do. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't say that. 
Go ahead and finish your statement, but don't. don't and uh, I'm sorry about what things we have with me. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Hall, you know, I voted for you last time. And that was also based on some uh, some positive remarks, but I didn't like to, what I heard you say today. Your, your fortunate Warren Goodwin stopped you before you really stepped off in a really huge hole. I, I don't want a response from you. I'm just telling you what I think. Um, I want to thank Ms. Lewis and uh, Mr. McGee for joining us today and sharing your thoughts and I, I'm, I know that took a lot of courage and uh, rubbed some really raw wounds for you still. So thank you for uh, your testimony is very important to us. Um, Mr. Hall, I'm going to stick by my vote from last time. Thank you. Uh, based on your age and your length of incarceration. I would add special conditions that you have absolutely no contact with any of the victim's family whatsoever. Um, and that you have a curfew from <clears throat> 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. And that you uh, enroll in an anger management class. If there's, I want you to enroll and complete an anger management class. I'm just one vote, so I'm going to defer to my colleagues. Ms. Wise? Uh, Mr. Hall, th this is, uh, again, I want to thank the, uh, the, the victim's family uh, for their participation today. It's, it's, it's very valuable uh, for, for you all to participate. Uh, Mr. Hall, this is my first time meeting you, and uh, I, my vote is to deny due to the strong victim opposition and the law enforcement opposition. But again, that's just one vote. Uh, I just encourage you to you know, reapply when you're eligible um, and maybe retake victim awareness to become a little more aware, uh, you know, spend some more time with that. Best wishes to you, sir. Mr. Maribel. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Mr. Hall, uh, this is a very tough case. And, and I'm on the fence, I can tell you that. Uh, I wanna thank the, the family of the victim for speaking. Uh, Warden Goodwin had some uh, very good comments for you. Uh, you kind of undercut those things. Uh, this is my first time hearing you and, and listening to you. Uh, and to be perfectly honest with you, when I read your report, I didn't buy the facts of the case. I mean, it, that, that's a, that's a far fetch for me that you were teaching her self-defense and it just uh, was an accident. I don't, I don't buy that at all. Uh, maybe that's just the way you've had to deal with that all your life while you've been in prison. And I accept that and I understand that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad the warden cut you off because you were really going to a bad place with the family of the victims in this case. And, and I've just got some serious doubts. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're 78 years old and I realize that. Uh, I, I, just, I just think you need some, some, some more understanding of, of the victim's plight and, and those kinds of things. So my vote today is going to be to deny you, but encourage you to take victim awareness. And the next time you come back before the board, understand and realize uh, and accept responsibility for what you did. Uh, so that's my vote today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Bella. So Mr. Hall, you received uh, one favorable vote, two votes to deny. So today you're, uh, application for parole has been denied, sir. Thank you.
Engineering. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Jerry Mosley, 44601. Thank you, Mr. Mosley. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a thorough interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participants who have indicated to speak to add their input. We have three who are here in support and all three will be speaking. We have Mr. William McCorkle, brother-in-law. With him is Ms. Reggie McCorkle, sister. We have Mr. Terry Norman, friend, who'll be speaking. In opposition, we have Ms. Stephanie Harrington, victim, who will be speaking. At the end, Mr. Mosley, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Ma'am, you understand yes. what you just said? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is the case for Jerry Mosley, DOC number 446001, date of birth, March 3rd, 1960, classified as a first felony offender. Offenses, aggravated incest, three counts. Sentencing date, February 11, 2002, re on March 17, 2003. Sentenced to a total of 40 years. Parole date, September 25th, 2011. Good time, not eligible. Full term, June 2nd, 2038. Is this information correct, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. Thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Just fine, everybody, sir. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, my name is Pearl Wise. I was assigned your case, so I'll be interviewing you first. I see you just had a, a birthday on the third. Happy belated birthday to you. Thank you, ma'am. You doing all right? Yes, ma'am. Ner I'm nervous <laughs> right now. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm trying to get you to relax. As you can tell, I'm, I'm uh, asking you some easy ones so you can relax. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this, your, uh, this is your first hearing? Uh, no, ma'am. I went up in uh, January of uh, 2018. Okay, so this is your second here, January of 2018. Okay, uh, the, the, uh, I do want to inform you off the top, um, you do have law enforcement opposition to your early release. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm just going to put it on the record. Uh, the DA's office, the Sheriff's office, Police Department uh, opposed to your early release. Um, I saw in the record that you were listed as disabled. Uh, what's the nature of that? Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. We say I feel... Uh... Back in 86, I fell 50 feet off of a hotel where I was working at. Okay. And I broke, I broke my back and stuff up, but I started having epileptic seizures, and I had seizures real bad all the way up until uh, 96. Okay. And mm -hmm. that's whenever I quit having them. Yeah. How you doing now? Well, I, I got a bunch of stuff wrong right now. The, I, they found out I got an enlarged heart. I've got diabetes, that, and... They say the doctor says I got a outside of glaucoma, Ooh, and I got uh, skin cancer and stuff real bad. So they've had to do surgery on, on some of them. My 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 my. Uh, so how long have you served of this uh, forty year sentence? Twenty three years and nine months. Twenty three years and nine months. And how old are you today? Sixty two. Sixty two. Okay. Um. Uh, the details of this case are, you know, they're, they're quite troubling. The age of the victim, that's very troubling. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Have you had sex offender treatment? Have you had all those courses? Yes, ma'am. I took all of them and then I facilitated it for uh, going on 15 years now. 16 great, years. great. Because uh, now one of the things I read somewhere, I don't know if it was recent or, or since, because I saw that you were a facilitator, so that's why it was so concerning for me. It said that that you had said, like I said, I don't know when you stated this, I don't have a date attached to it, that uh, that you were having a consensual relationship with the victim and that she was not a virgin and and that uh, it, it was just a relationship. And it, it's some, it was disturbing to hear you say you were in a relationship with 11 to 12 year old girl. Do you recall that? Uh, yes, ma'am. So what do you say to that now, now that you are a sex offender treatment facilitator? What do you say to that now? 
Well, I mean, it was it was my fault, clearly. I mean, everything it was it my fault. She had nothing, you know, it wasn't her fault at all. She had nothing to do with that. And, and I see that now, especially since I've gone through all the classes. And the main thing is, since I give life to God, and I, I did that experience in God, and that was one of the best things I ever done. And God showed me a lot of stuff about myself that needed to be changed, and He showed me how that I could change it, and gave me the gave me the tools to, through his word and the strength to be able to, to be able to do that there. And then the sex defense class helped a lot, I mean, a whole, a whole lot. And the, the, like the risk factors and all that, they're good in telling you where you're at. But the, to me, personally, the main thing that helps you the very most is the Roco scale. Because if you really, really, truly don't want to be a, a defender again, whenever you go out there on the street, do the Roco scale, it shows you at any, any moment what risk you are, whether you're in high, you know, a moderate risk, low risk, or high risk and stuff. And so you as an individual, you know, you know your triggers, you know what what things is bad for you or not. And so then you know not to be there. If that if, if you're in like if you're getting close to a high risk zone, you know you don't need to be there. Or if you're in a moderate risk, the best one to be in is in a in a low, you know. Yes, sir. And so, and, uh, and you recognize that that's gonna be for a lifetime. Uh yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's gonna yes. be for a lifetime, yeah. That's uh Okay, uh, and if you are successful today, your, your plan is to, is to move to, to Texas and live with your father? Uh, yes, ma'am. My dad, he's 86, 87 years old. He just had a birthday in February, but he's 87. Okay, he's, I had I had 83. All right, 87. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, but he's in bad shape. He's uh, disabled. He's in a wheelchair. He lives alone. My mom, she passed away uh, five years ago. And so my dad, he lives all by himself now. I got two sisters, but they live over a hundred something miles away from him, so they can't be there with him all the time to you know to help him whenever he needs help. So he's basically there by himself. And so I'm gonna go there and, and stay with him and help him, and then I'm gonna take over. He got a, a lawn care business. Of course, he he ain't doing much. Now. He got a couple of guys still working for him. But he's got all the equipment and everything that's needed, and it won't be hard for me to. That, that's that's in the record. Thank you, sir. That's in the record. I re I read that in the record. Uh, uh -huh. But but with your health concerns, and that's a, that's a whole other concern as well. Uh, so call out for the record some of the other programs that you had. I, I I saw you got your high school diploma, and you got a technical trade as well in landscaping. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. In horticulture. Yes, ma'am. Horticulture. Yeah, I'm sorry. Horticulture. So, what else? Just put on the record some of the programs you've had an opportunity to take. Okay, like I said, I've done Experience in God. I've done uh, the Timothy Club. I've done uh, Celebrating Recovery. I've done that for two years, three years, went through three different times. And then uh, Bible storytelling. And, uh, because I've done anger management. Advanced okay. anger management, stress management, advanced stress management. Good. I'll take uh, the substance abuse class. And uh, 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 I'm gonna stop you right there on the substance abuse. What was your drug of choice? Marijuana. Okay. So you you were high on, on all these encounters. You had smoked marijuana. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that's one of your high triggers. You know that. Yeah, and, and praise God that. That I don't have the desire for the for the drug stuff anymore. I I can honestly say that that it's been over 24 years now since I've since I've done any kind of drug right now. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. All right, then um that, that's all the questions I have. Uh, thank you for answering my questions. Uh, yes, Warden, what do you want to tell us? Uh Jerry's record speaks for itself. You notice uh, y'all didn't mention the disciplinary record. He's been incarcerated for a number of years and he hasn't had any disciplinary reports. Yeah, that's true. I forgot. And I know he mentioned the fact that he's disabled, but he is able to do some uh, horticulture and landscaping work. He maintains a lot of the uh, uh, flower beds and stuff for us on the South Compound. He does an excellent job. He's got really good work ethics and works very hard and and uh, maintaining those. He does work as a uh, facilitator in our sex offender treatment program as well, and has for for a while. I think those uh, comments you referenced, uh, uh, Ms. Wise, was, was in his uh, Static 99 interview. Okay, okay. Uh, in preparation for the pro here. And so those were, uh, I think those were actually made in December of 2021 when he was interviewed by Mr. Hayden. All right. So, Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd, for cleaning it up. Yes, ma'am. But, but he has an excellent 
history here at the institution and he does have a lot, several health issues he mentioned. Uh, you know, it was skin cancer and the glaucoma and the enlarged heart. All those things are true and accurate. He's been receiving treatment through LSU for, uh, and, and our medical department for those things as well. And he always has a good attitude and, and a really good uh, conduct history here. I don't have anything else to say. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Wise and Warden Goodwin. Um, Ms. Teresa, could you introduce the guests who've indicated they'd like to speak? First, we will hear from Mr. Terry Norman, who's a friend. Is it my turn? Yes, sir. I just want to say that uh, my dad and Jerry's dad were good friends and I've known Jerry most all my life and I know from just talking to him that he's changed and he's different I know that uh, he never did anything like that before and I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that he has been reformed it's kind of short and sweet that's all I have to say Thank you. Next, we will hear from Mr. William McCorkle, brother-in-law. Mr. McCorkle, you can speak now. Is there a Miss McCorkle? Is that Reggie? Yes, ma'am. All right, well, can we move on, please? Apparently they've stepped away. For our opposition side, we will hear Ms. Stephanie Harrington. Um, I just want to start off. Thank you, board members, for allowing me to speak. I don't know if any of y'all were on the board five years ago, uh, but I'm a victim of sexual, physical, mental, and emotional abuse by Jerry. This abuse began as early as three years old. Uh, the physical abuse ranged from being thrown across the room to just being hit in places that the bruises could easily be covered up. Sexually, he had intercourse with me, put objects inside of me, videotaped me, and had other men have intercourse with me. All of this and so much more occurred to me as a young child, beginning around four or five years old. <clears throat> His threats of killing me or my mother were real and very much believed. Today, Jerry is seeking to be released from prison, which basically is telling me that he feels he has paid his due for the horrendous things he did to me. It's ironic to me because he did not just hold me prisoner for around 10 years, but I continue to be in a prison. I'm stuck in a mental prison with memories, smells, sensations haunting me. Until I began a family of my own, I did not realize the impact that these things had and are continuing to have on me. I've had to start seeking counseling again to deal with my anger and feelings of inadequacy, and even how to deal with my own emotions. I'm currently under the care of a neurologist and cardiologist to help with daily migraines, sleepless nights, passing out, irregular heart rhythms, all things that are a result from this prison he sent me to. The prison I will be incarcerated in, not for 25 or even 40 years, 
system for the rest of my life. Jerry, as I said five years ago, I have forgiven you. But you still have a price to pay. You talk about me, the things you did to me, you've not mentioned once what you did to your own son and daughter. Board members, I hope you're able to read back over my testimony from five years ago, since I did go into more detail then than I am today. As I said then, I'll say now, I just hope as you consider your decision, consider what you would say or do if your daughter, sister, wife, granddaughter were sitting here. Imagine the tears, fears, nightmares, that you sat and witnessed them to go through, have to process through, but you could do nothing to help. Imagine them spending the rest of their life in this prison of mental and ultimately of physical torture. Make your decision and just be prepared to share with your loved ones of why you made that decision. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Um, all right, Mr. Mosley, is there something you'd like to say to the panel before we vote and address your remarks to the panel members? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, now, like I said, I admit that, that I was wrong in, in what I've done, and, and it, was all, it was my fault. It wasn't, it wasn't Stephanie's. I've never tried to blame her or nothing else, but the thing of it is, I've never denied nothing that I've done, never. From day, from day one, I've never denied nothing that I've done. I've never held nobody captive. I've never picked her up, throw her across the room. I've never done nothing to uh, any of my bi biological children or nothing. And if I could change what happened between me and Stephanie, I changed it in a heartbeat. I pray, I pray every day that God would touch her and, and give her peace and happiness in her life and heal her for the pain and stuff that I caused her. Because I know she had that she didn't deserve to go through the things that I put it through of the, the sexual relationship that, that we had, but it is, as far as the abuse and stuff, it most definitely never, ever had I ever sold her to anybody, ever thought about doing nothing like that. It wouldn't. But for what I've done, I, I deserve to be locked up. I'd be the first one to say that, that I deserved to be locked up. But in the time that I've been locked up, I've done everything that I possibly can to change me. From my heart, I've, I've tried my level best to change. And the only way that I've been able to do that there is through the grace of God. God is the one who has changed me and give me the, the ability, the strength, the stuff, and the, the knowledge to know how to change. And after going through the sex fence class and stuff, I know that I'm not never going to put myself in no kind of predicament to be in a situation like that too. Because I don't ever want to come back to no place like this. Either. I never, ever do I want to come back. And I don't ever want to hurt nobody else ever again. And so I've, I've done everything that I can to make sure that I won't, that I, that I don't go out there and hurt anybody. I just want to be able to go out there, spend some time with my dad, what time my dad has left, and try to start a life for myself. So that's, all, that's all I got to say. All right. Good. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. I think the uh, panel's prepared to vote. We'll start with Ms. Wise. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mosley. Uh, uh, well said, sir. Well said. And uh, uh, Miss Stephanie, uh, I appreciate your courage today. Uh, I think you're stronger than you realize that you are. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mosley, uh, at this time, and for me, for me, uh, at this time, my vote is to deny because of the law enforcement opposition and, and the, uh, the victim's opposition that's been expressed. I would like to see you take additional substance abuse treatment and additional victim awareness uh, programming. Uh, to, uh, but I, and I thank you for what the work you're doing uh, at the institution, and I hope that will continue. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to echo uh, Ms. Wise's comments uh, to Ms. Harrington. Now, thank you very much for the courage to be here and to tell us uh, what you've told us here today. Uh, Mr. Mosley, uh, in looking at your, your record, uh, you've done a lot of very positive things. Uh, you've taken uh, all four phases of sex offender treatment 
and you've been a facilitator for what you say now is is 15 years. Uh, but I have some grave concerns about the point Ms. Wise raised in, in, in kind of watching you just a few moments ago as well in your comments back in December of last year where you said this was a consensual relationship. Uh, this young girl was somewhere between 10 and 11 years old could not have possibly been a consensual relationship, legally or otherwise. And if you didn't learn that in all of your sex offender programs and you're facilitating, I'm concerned about that. Uh, I think you have a little more work to do. Uh, I think you need to, to be more aware and more in tune of what you've done to the victim in this case. Uh, my vote today is going to be to deny you as well. So good luck to you, and I encourage you to continue to work hard. Mr. Mosley, I uh, I do agree. Uh, the comments you made uh, are uh, are evident that your your understanding of what happened uh, you're not there yet. I think you still have some more work to do. I'm so glad that you are involved in the faith based community and you have those tools that you're working with, but I still think you have a little more work to do. So I concur with my colleagues. My vote today is to deny your parole. And uh, I, I do echo Ms. Wise's suggestions about some additional uh, classes that would benefit you. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? My name is Jeremy. DOC number four, eight one eight. I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? My name is Jeremy Rogers, DOC number four one seven eight one eight. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participant who have indicated to speak to have their input. We have Mr. Jacoby Rankin sign, who will be speaking in support. At the end, Mr. Rogers, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the case for Jermaine Rogers, DOC number 417818, date of birth, September 5th, 1978 classified as a six felony offender. Offenses, distribution of MDMA in drug-free zone, distribution of marijuana in drug-free zone, distribution of marijuana, two counts. Sentencing dates are August 31st, 2009 and August 14, 2014. Sentenced to a total of 37 years. Parole date, July 1st, 2020. Good time, March 18, 2023. Full term, April 1st, 2048. Is this information correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Renato. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. So you've been before the parole board before. You were seen by a parole panel in October of 2020. You were denied at that time. Do you recall why you were denied? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was told that uh, I haven't served enough time on the uh, sentence and I had the police opposition against me. Yes, I show victim opposition, criminal history, uh, revocation history, law enforcement, and history of substance abuse. So how, how old are you, sir? 43 at the time, man. How long have you been in jail this time? Uh, eight years and three months and some days. What's the longest you've been in jail before? Eight years this time, you this one? Yes, ma'am. And you're classified as a sixth offender. Yes, ma'am. And when I look at your record, <clears throat> you're a sixth offender, and, and it seems as though you've had at least six revocations, and the, all those re revocations were for new drug arrests. Yes, ma'am. What's your drug of choice? Marijuana. Marijuana? Yes, ma'am. So, and, and this uh, particular incarceration was also for distribution. Was it, is it meth or MDMA? MDMA. MDMA. So you were just dealing that? You didn't do no. that? Drug? Well, I, I took it every now and then, but it wasn't a drug of choice. So, <clears throat> I'm concerned. So tell me, um, you know, should you, I do see, let me just say the good stuff. I see you've been working hard. You've got uh, quite a few educational good times to, uh, credits. You've, uh, <clears throat> what have you been able to complete since your last parole hearing in, in October of 2020? Living in balance and reentry. All right. What'd you learn in living in balance? I learned in living in balance that sometimes you have to take your sobriety and take it serious and, and, and learn about the responsibility that you have that's afforded to you in, in the future, in the presence that's there for you. And I also learned in living in balance that when you are around someone that do drugs, would you stay around them or would you just leave? Or would you talk to him about not being able to you know, be around drugs or whatnot or whatever, but I would just leave. Okay, I was going to ask you what's the answer. So you say you just leave. I just leave. Okay, okay. and I see that you um, participated in the twelve step program. Are you a participant in AA meetings? Yes, ma'am. AA, you still do that? Yes, ma'am. How often do y'all get to do that? Well, in the dorm, we have a dude who like facilitated, and we do it every Tuesday and Thursday in the, in the dormitory. So twice a week in the dorm. Yes, ma'am. Which and you're you're a member of the JCs? Yes, ma'am. So, what kind of community service work do you do? Well, the community service work that I do, 
as of now incarcerated is is yeah. is nothing really, but I help the others that don't have nothing. How do you do that? Well, I support the ones that don't get nothing in from their family members and you know, like I do janitorial work in the dormitory, but I also, you know, do hobby craft and stuff like that. So with the funds and the monies I get from those, I help the people that don't have. So you share? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, tell me what your plan for sobriety is, if, should you be successful? And look, your record is scary. You've got a lengthy, very lengthy arrest history, and, and most of it is drugs and theft. So what is your plan to be successful, My specifically? Plan specifically is to obtain a CDL to make a better future for my children, help the community, talk to the uh, at-risk children, you know, help my family with my mom, you know, my dad, he kind of getting sick too, help him, you know, this time here, I really learned a lesson by coming to David Wade Correctional Facility. This place has taught me how to grow and become a man. What's your plan for sobriety? My plan for sobriety, so for sobriety is to attend at least two AA meetings a week, outpatient rehab, or if I need more, I will attend more. Why is AA important to you? AA is important to me because I found that there was a higher being that I can trust there to help me change the things that I can't change. Uh, and you, you, so your plans for employment are to get the CDL? Yes, ma'am. What kind of work you did other than selling drugs before? Well, I was in the oil field. I did oil field service work. I did construction work. I even worked at a poultry plant. I done worked at uh, Atlas Chemical Plant in Shreveport. They call it Calumet now. I done worked at Fiber Bun at a prefab building. I worked at Reynolds. I done worked at TNL. Okay. So you, you can work. Good. Yes, ma'am. What's the longest you ever held a job? How long? I held a job the longest for three and a half years. All right. Why do you think we ought to take a chance on you? Well, I feel like you ought to take a chance on me, ma'am, because I have rehabilitated myself and it's time for me to do better and have brighter things for the future for the children that's out there today. And I don't want them to make the same mistakes I have. And I don't, like I say, I don't battle myself since I've been here at David Wade. This place has taught me to become a man and not a child. Okay. I see Miss Miss Wise has a question. Miss Wise? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, back in 18, you had scored well to get into a Voltec program. Yes, ma'am. So uh, what, are you, what are you doing about that now? What's the well, status right. of that? At this particular time here, they had kind of shut it down due to the COVID. And, right. and I had moved over to the uh, south side of the compound. And, you know, I had been injured in an accident to why I couldn't wear a shoe at the particular time. And I was, mm. was going to take up HVAC. Okay, so so what? Where are you on on that now? By getting a trade, what are your well, thoughts on? What are your future plans on that? Because you're still a young man. My future plans on that right now is to obtain the CDLs first, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna still continue my education by going to school to obtain my HVAC license. Okay, okay, all right. I, I, that was okay. Thank you for answering my question. That's all I had, Madam Chairman. Ms. Wise, I just want to mention that, that those vocational programs was closed here at David Way by the Northwest Technical College uh, due to budgetary issues. Uh, about the time he got ready to be put in the program, uh, they, they, they closed the campus at David Wade. So the only program we have right now is a carpentry program and the Serve Safe program. That's our two vocational programs right now. All right. Thank you, Warren, for clearing that up. I appreciate yes, it. All right, um, Warden Goodwin, is there anything you can add to uh, tell us about Mr. Rogers? No, uh, Jermancy speaks very well for himself, uh, Mr. Nazza. He, he's very well spoken. He's got a really good attitude. He's got a really good conduct record. Uh, he's, he's got an honor card living in the honor dorm. He's got excellent uh, reviews by Colonel Coleman and his work performance. Uh, he, he's a pleasant individual to be around. He, uh, he does really, really He's done really, really well here at David Wade. I know he's got a very troubling record on the streets of uh, Menden and Webster Paris with being a sixth offender and being as young as he is, only 40, 43 years old. But, uh, you know, I, I take him at face value when he says these eight years is really uh, 
turned him around. I believe him when he says he doesn't want to come back to prison, and I, I really think that he's going to make every effort to stay out of uh, prison if he's given that opportunity. Good. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Rogers, is there a statement you'd like to make to us before we vote? Well, I want to say thank y'all for hearing me again, and and I hope it's in your heart to bless me with this parole so I can go do with my family. <gasps> All right, sir. Uh, Mr. Nacho, we do have his son who's here in support who would like to speak. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Um, That's my father. Y'all can hear me? Yes. Um, he, um, that's my father. I love him. And he half missed half of my life growing up. I do have a little sister, and we was ready for him to come home. Well, thank you, Jacoby, for um, for joining us. We appreciate hearing from you today. Mr. Rogers, yeah. uh, I think we're prepared to vote. I'm going to vote first. Um, I, I believe what you're saying, and I believe you mean what you're saying, at least. I'm, I'm proud of uh, the work that you've done since your last hearing. Uh, you've been working on you and and I believe that we probably you're a six offender and had you done eight years in the first part of your criminal history we probably wouldn't be seeing you today huh you're right yeah so I, I'm willing to take a chance on you my vote today is going to be to grant your parole I do want you to get a uh, substance abuse evaluation when you're released and if there is any recommendation for treatment, you to follow those recommendations. Um, we'll add as a special condition that you do attend, at least for an interim period, at least three AA meetings a week. Uh, I think that's important, and you've said that's important to you also. Um, and we'll see what my colleagues have to say. That's my vote. Ms. Thank Wise? Uh, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. My, my concern for you is uh, the impact of letting you out with a 37-year sentence on the community. I don't want anybody to think that, a, you know, a drug dealer can come to jail for a little while and, and get back out. And that's what you were, right, a drug dealer? Yes, ma'am. I mean, you were in it since age 17, your first arrest. You've been doing it a long time. But the part that I picked up on, that I that I... I I, I believe you're sincere, is that you want to go back and tell some other kids. Yeah, that that, that drug dealer ain't, ain't, it ain't what it, it ain't what it's, yeah, yeah, it ain't. So I'm going to take a chance on you as well. Uh, my vote is to grant uh, your outstanding programs, outstanding comments from the warden, uh, and your son, your son here, uh, uh, that, that, that impacted me. I think that was the last tip that I needed. Uh, but I would like for you to, because of your poor supervision history and your escape history, report to probation parole weekly for the first eight weeks. Okay. And really get acclimated and realize that, that that parole officer is really on your team. Uh, best wishes to you, sir. All right, thank you. Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Rogers, uh, I've got some real concerns. I want to be honest with you. Uh, you know, your criminal history is horrible. Uh, you're a drug dealer, you're a con man, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, when you first came to prison, uh, you, you one, of, one of your, although you only had a couple of write-ups, one of them was for bribery. Uh, you, you know, you're a manipulator, uh, at least you were in the past, uh, but I want to look at what you've done and what you've accomplished. Uh, uh, you have accomplished a lot of things. Uh, in the year 2021, you took a lot of programs. You've done a lot of things since you've been in prison. Uh, perhaps it's not a long enough sentence, but you've done a lot of things. But the thing mm -hmm. that kind of uh, pushed me over the, the, the line today was uh, the warden's comments. Uh, how well you're doing, uh, what you're doing, and uh, how you're behaving yourself. So, uh, I'm willing to take a chance with you as well. My vote is going to be to grant with the same conditions as outlined by both Ms. Renatza and Ms. Wise. So good luck to you, sir. All right, thank you. Mr. Excuse Rogers, me, Ms. all right. Excuse me, Ms. Renatza, I, I forgot to mention the community service. You're going to do it anyway, 
but at least four hours a month of community service in, in a way that you, you know, you find appropriate and giving back to your community. That's mowing the old lady's yard. And I'm seeing you out, you know, doing things for your community, individuals in your community. What is it, what happened? All right. Mr. Rogers, you've been, we've taken a chance on you. Don't let us down. Good luck, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? My name is Roderick Jackson, 121179. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Let me explain the process here. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a thorough interview with you. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the case for Roderick Jackson, DOC number 121179, date of birth, August 18, 1967, classified as a third felony offender, offense armed robbery, sentencing date, May 16, 1988, sentenced to a total of 99 years, parole date, August 18, 2012, good time, June 17, 2053, Full term, December 8, 2086. Is this information correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Marabella. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. My name is Tony Marabella. Your case was assigned to me, so I'll be the first person to talk with you today. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Mr. Jackson, how old are you, sir? Uh, 54. Okay. And how long have you been in prison on these charges? 34 years. Tell me a little bit about your work experience while you've been in prison. What have you done while you've been in prison work-wise? Well, uh, I started off just basic field work. But uh, since I've come to David Wade, I've been working, uh, I've been working in the kitchen as a, uh, as a janitor and cleaner. I started out as... But for the last, what, three or four years, I've been working as a baker. How long have you been at Wade? Since 01, 2001. 
Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the crime. What happened? Well, it, it was a robbery that it was a robbery that went bad. It, it it went wrong, and the victim was shot. Well, I mean, all robberies are bad. So tell me yeah. how this one went bad. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, no one was supposed to get hurt. It was never my intention that anybody got hurt. Now, you were originally charged and convicted with uh, armed robbery and attempted murder. Uh, I've, I've reviewed your file, and, and it appears that the Court of Appeals threw out the murder charge. Is that the attempted murder charge? Is that right? Yes, sir. Do, do you recall why? Uh, not, not, all, not, not off the top of my head. Uh, I think it was double jeopardy. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you've accomplished. Uh, you're a member of Toastmasters? Yes, sir. How long have you been a member of Toastmasters? Maybe five years. Okay. Tell me about Toastmasters and tell me what you've learned with that program. Well, Toastmasters is a program that teaches, it, it teaches you to build confidence and it allows you to speak in public. And what I've learned from the program is that <clears throat> not to be nervous when I'm in front of an audience and to have my voice carry when I speak so that I won't be, will be easily understood. Okay. Now, in looking at your disciplinary record, you've had 159 write-ups. Yes, sir. And uh, your last one was in 2015. So tell me about all of those write-ups and tell me why you haven't had one in the last seven years. Well, the reason for all those write-ups, my, my, my time in prison has not been, it has been difficult and uh, full of hardships. And not only that, I've been, I've been hard-headed. It's hard for me to learn lessons. And I guess over the last seven years, I've, I've taken notice of the lessons I've had to learn. Good. What are some of the best programs that you recall having taken and what do they mean to you? Uh, I've, I've taken anger management and anger management taught me that anger is not necessarily a bad emotion. It, it's a it's an emotion that everybody has, but it's the way you it's the way you express it that can't be wrong. Uh, I've taken victim awareness, and victim awareness taught me that the victims are never uh, at fault. They are never wrong. And you can have more. It's more than just the person the crime was committed on that, that is a victim. You can even victimize society. Now you you lost two hundred and fifty hours of uh, good time, uh, and then you restored it. Yes, sir. And you have two hundred forty hours of credit. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now let's talk a little bit about again about the crime. Let's go back to uh, nineteen eighty seven. Were you drinking or doing drugs of any kind? Yeah, I was drinking and drugging was basically my life. Tell me what tell me when you started using drugs. I was I was rather young, maybe 12, 13. What did you start using? I started off smoking marijuana. Okay. And what did you progress to? I progressed to smoking PCP and bombing fluid. Uh shooting heroin, you know, just, it, it was a downhill spiral. Were you doing drugs at the time this crime was committed? Yes, sir. Were the drugs, uh, how often were you do, using heroin? Maybe three times a week. For how long? A few years, a couple of years. 
during the course, during the time while you've been in prison? I know you've taken AA and you've taken a couple of substance abuse programs. What have you learned through the substance abuse programs while you've been in prison? Well, I learned that being an alcoholic and being a drug addict, I'm powerless against those drugs. You know, my, my sense of reasoning is virtually non-existent. So to, to be able to function, I have to stay away from those drugs. And I've learned that like the, like the 11th step of uh, AA says, uh, soft through prayer and meditation. I have tried to improve my conscious contact with God as I understand it. In any of those 159 write-ups, how many of them were involving either drugs or alcohol? Mm, a, a good many of them. A good when, was, when was the last time you had drugs or alcohol while you've been in prison? Uh, 2011. Tell me what your sobriety plan is going to be once you get out. My sobriety plan is to continue attending AA and NA meetings and to have a uh, have a communication line of communication with with my family that would allow me to seek their help when I need it. Where would you be living if you were to get paroled? In Nagadish, Louisiana. And who would you be living with? I would be living with my father. What kind of work would you be doing? I understand the uh, possibility of working at QSI Sanitation. What is that? And would you be doing that? Yes, sir. They, they, uh, they clean factories when they are shut down and they are uh, they they sanitize plants when uh when that when the plants are shut down. Okay. How many AA meetings do you think you need to go to per week? At least two. And how long do you think you have to go to those meetings? That probably for the I'll probably be going to AA meetings for the rest of my life. What what are some of your triggers? Some of my triggers are high emotions, anger, uh, frustration. Okay. Now, you uh, you appeared before the pardon the parole board back in 2019, right? Yes, sir. And at that time, you were denied, and it was suggested that you do certain things. Yes, sir. One of the things was that you take uh, thinking for change, and you took that, didn't you? Yes, sir. More anger management courses, and you took that, didn't you? Yes, sir. Did you do the pre-release course? No, sir. I haven't done pre-release yet. Okay. And why haven't you done that one? Um, I, I haven't been eligible for it. He's got length of, due to the length of the uh, his sentence, Mr. Maribel, he hasn't come up to be scheduled yet. He's uh, with his earliest release date being 2053. Uh, but we can schedule him and get him that program if uh, if if uh, the pro board requires it. Uh, okay, prior, good. Prior to uh, any granting of the hearing or uh, granting of the release or anything. Good, thank you. Uh, and I also believe at the time, uh, in the last hearing, uh, your risk factor was moderate and you've reduced that to a low. Is that right? Yes, sir. What would you say to the family of the victim or today if, if they were here to listen to you? Well, I would like to express my, my deepest heartfelt sorrow for the pain and agony that my actions caused. And while I may never be able to compensate for the harm I've done, I would ask that they please be assured that that immature selfish drug addict is no longer the man I am today. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Warden, can you tell us a little bit about Mr. Jackson? 
Well, he's uh, he has been here since 2000, as he mentioned. Uh, he's been here a little over 20 years, and he used to get a lot of write-ups, as the record indicates. He was very. He spent a good bit of time in our our cell blocks, but uh, starting in 2015, he's really, uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, he made a significant change in his institutional behavior and his institutional activities. He got involved. He worked his way out of the cell block to begin with by stopping getting write-ups and improving his attitude and other things. Uh, and since 2015, he's, he's gotten an honor card. He's held a job for over five years, the same job working in the uh, kitchen, as he mentioned earlier. He hasn't had a write-up since 2015. And you mentioned the fact I did restore his good time. He got 250 days of uh, good time restored back in 2018 after he went uh, three years without a disciplinary report. Uh, so he's made a huge improvement over the last six years. Uh, he was uh, he was a, a wild cat for a while, Mr. Marabella, but he's, he's calmed down quite a bit and he's doing very well and he's focused on positive things and his records, records uh, at the institution reflects that. Great. Thank you very much, Warden. I appreciate your comments. Madam Chairman, that's all the questions I have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor Bella. Mr. Jackson, is there a statement you'd like to make to the parole panel before we vote? Yes, I'd just like to say that, uh, I'd just like to say that the, the person I am today is, uh, I'm a person full of compassion and, and remorse for the wrongs I've done. And while while I may never be able to, to pay for the harms I've done, uh, I would like to say that uh, it is through my efforts to become close to the creator, Jehovah, that has allowed me to change and become a better person. Thank you, sir. I think that uh, we're prepared to vote. We'll start with Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Jackson, I uh, just want to come, uh, commend you for uh, uh, an excellent job that you've done while you've been in prison, at least for the last seven years. Uh, you've done remarkably well. Uh, you had a rough struggle, as you talked about, and as the warden talked about when you first came in. Uh, you had a, a, a pretty rough history as you, you, you come through there. But uh, in the last seven years, uh, you have done a complete turnaround. Uh, you, you have, from the last time that you were before this parole board, which was in 2019, you've lowered your, your risk to a, to a, a low level. Uh, you've performed all of the things that they've asked you to do, save the uh, pre-release uh, program. Uh, and, and you've done a lot of things. You've got some good comments from the warden. I think you've got a good sobriety plan. I think you understand your addiction. Uh, it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's nothing that's going to go away. And when you said, I'll have to go to AA meetings for the rest of my life, that's a fact. That's the way it's going to have to be. Uh, based upon all of those things, uh, my vote today is going to be to conditionally grant your parole upon your completing the pre-release program, the 100 hours of pre-release. Warden indicated he could get you in that program uh, and, and help you get into that program. So that would be the condition uh, subsequent to your, your release. Uh, once you are released, the conditions would be three AA meetings per week, uh, a curfew for at least the first six months. Uh, the pro your parole supervisor can, can determine longer or, or less, but for the first six months from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. I'd also like you to go to your uh, parole supervisor uh, weekly for the first 60 days. Uh, now, I'm gonna leave that up to your parole supervisor because if you get a job that requires, uh, that might make that more difficult, I'm gonna leave that up to them. And I'd also like you to do five hours of community service work. Uh, you speak very well. I think you've got a good story to tell and I think you could help a lot of people not get where you are. So that would be my vote. Uh, good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Marabella, Ms. Wise. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Jackson, is it your intention to 
go to uh, Texas or stay in Louisiana? Or oh, that's kind of uh, up in the air. I'm, I'm going to stay in Louisiana uh, at least for a couple of years. Okay. All right. All right. Then. But, sir, uh, I want to commend you as well uh, on the work that you've done. Uh, at, and my vote is to grant uh, for the reasons I already stated, and I concur with the uh, recommendations uh, already stated on the record. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, um, based on uh, the comments by Warden Goodwin and the work that you've done, my vote is the same, so with the same special conditions. So today, sir, you received a unanimous vote to grant your parole. Good luck to you. Thank you. Warden Goodwin, I think that concludes our business at David Wade, so we'll adjourn. It's 1141. Thanks for accommodating us today. Yes, ma'am.